You are all well and wired up for Jesus. This is your teacher, Memnundu, and I hope you are still enjoying the Passover weekend. Today, our lesson is the continuation of the past lessons that we have had. Today, we are speaking about Jesus being resurrected from the dead. So, our lesson today is titled, He Has Risen from the Dead. Sit back, listen, and enjoy your lesson. I will start reading your story. The evening after Jesus had been put to death, a wealthy Jew called Joseph of Arimathea begged Pontius Pilate to allow him to bury Jesus' body. Pilate agreed. So Joseph went with his friend, Nicodemus, back to Golgotha, where women were still weeping at the foot of his cross. Gently, Joseph and Nicodemus lifted Jesus' poor bleeding body down. They wrapped him in a linen with burial spices and accompanied by the sobbing women, took him to a nearby cemetery. There, the two men laid Jesus in a small cave-like tomb that Joseph had already paid for and rolled a heavy stone across the entrance. Full of grief and with nothing else to do, they left. Meanwhile, some Jewish officials had been, had been to see Pilate. Jesus of Nazareth said he would rise up again after three days. They told the Roman governor, have soldiers guard his tomb so no one can steal the body. Then tell everyone that he's miraculously come back to life. Pilate nodded and sent the men away. Pilate's guards sat outside Jesus' tomb through the night of the first Good Friday. Nothing had happened. They kept watch all the next day and again, nobody came. But as dawn broke on the Sabbath, the third day, the earth suddenly shook so violently that it knocked the soldiers off their feet. A white light blazed out of the sky and shone over the tomb. Wow! Through the glare, the terrified soldiers watched the glowing figure of a man roll away a massive stone from the tomb entrance. 
the soldiers were scared by what they saw and they fled for their lives. <laughs> Not long after, a group of grieving women arrived at the cemetery to pay their respects at the womb. They included Jesus' friend, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and John, Salome and Joanna. When they saw that the soldiers were gone and the stone had been rolled away, they screamed in horror. <sighs> Someone must have stolen Jesus' body, they said. Inside the tomb where Jesus' body should have been, two shining men were sitting. Hmm. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? The men said, Don't you remember that the Son of Man said he would rise on the third day? Mary Magdalene raised to fetch the disciples Peter and John. When the two men saw the empty tomb, they were full of anger. They went off to try and find out who had taken the body. Mary sank down outside the tomb, sobbing. Then suddenly, she sent someone behind her. Mary spun around, and through her tears, she saw a blurry figure whom she thought must have been the cemetery gardener. Why are you weeping? The man asked. If you moved the body, she begged, please tell me where to. The man said just one word, Mary. Mary's heart stood still. Suddenly, she recognized the man. It was Jesus. Go now, Jesus said softly, as Mary fell on his feet, gazing up at him in wonder. Find the disciples and tell them that I am soon to return to my father. Meanwhile, the other women who had seen the empty tomb were hurrying homewards when all at once a man appeared out of nowhere on the road in front of them. Good morning, he said. The women were amazed and couldn't believe who they were hearing and seeing. Don't be afraid, Jesus said. Go and tell my disciples to travel to Galilee, and I will meet them there soon. Amen. So this is our story, Dynamite Kids. So now we are going to share what the story was about and the few things that we are learning from the story. So here, this is the story of when Jesus um, was buried. So the first thing that we are noting from our story, there is a man who seems to have done something that is very precious, and the man's name was Joseph of Arimathea. So this guy had bought himself a tomb for the day when he passes on where he would have been laid. But we find him being able to sacrifice that tomb for Jesus. Because remember, then my kids, after Jesus um, had died on the cross, he was left there hanging with the other two men. So Joseph did not want to see Jesus hanging for so long. So what he did, he asked for Jesus' body so that he may lay it into rest. Mm. How amazing is this dynamic kid? To see someone take care of someone who can't take care of himself anymore. Then in our story, we are also learning of how the officials emphasized that they remember Jesus saying, after three days, he will rise again. So for them, they thought, mm -mm, he must have been lying. Someone will come and take him. So they said that they must be strong guards cutting the tomb of Jesus so that no one comes and takes him. Hmm, isn't this interesting? So we find the guards there on Friday after Jesus had passed on, nothing happened. Saturday, the guards were still there and nothing happened. But on Sunday, 
early in the morning hours. We find the guards being terrified because of what they saw. What did the guards see? They saw the fulfillment of the words that Jesus had said, that indeed after three days he was going to resurrect. How interesting is this, to see the word of God being fulfilled. So when that happened, the guards couldn't help themselves, but they ran away. We also learned that when that happened, there were two men that were in there, but that could not be identified. And there was a man who rolled the, 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 the tomb, um, that was the, the, the stone that was basically closing the entrance of the tomb of Jesus. So we find that there were angels in there that actually were there to ensure that the tomb of Jesus is open and Jesus is able to leave the tomb. So we are learning from this story, most importantly, the following lessons. Number one, kindness again, as our previous lesson, where we see the man called Joseph being so kind to give or to sacrifice. So we are learning about sacrifice in this lesson, that sometimes there are people who will sacrifice what is so precious to them so that some people can have. So that is the lesson that we are getting, that as you grow dynamite kids, there will be times where you have to do sacrifices for other people out of no gain. The other thing that we are learning from this lesson is the truthfulness of Jesus. He spoke that he will resurrect after three days and most did not believe him. But now we find him and his words coming into life. So what is this teaching us then, my kids? It is teaching us that the word of God is life and it's true. So whatever that is written in the word of God is bound to come to life. So it is very important that whatever SSUNI Kankulunkulu Sigu Kolo and Jengoba Ekbali, Ngoba Umbalo Wake Umwele, Futi Upefum Lulumye. So Ilogo Esik Funda and Am Sanja Madonna Makit, Uwoti Uchesu, Wafa, Godwa Musulus Tatu Watola Gala Esifugi, Kubalegi Le Uwoti Sazu Wut Uches, Wavuga, Waba Fine. Indeed, he has risen from the dead. I hope you enjoyed your lesson and I hope you have learned so much through your lesson. So we are going to say our prayer and afterwards enjoy our song. May you all stand so that we may pray. Please say this after me. Dear God, thank you that you always keep your promises. Help us to learn the same. Help us to learn that sometimes we have to wait on your promises. Thank you for your blessings to the whole world. Thank you also for blessing us with your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending him to us. And thank you for the Holy Spirit. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much, Dynamite Kids. Enjoy your Passover Sunday. Uchesu uvugile kwabafileyo. Enjoy the song that's gonna follow. Magube umusa. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Now Still wouldn't be enough. I reckon they will. Who could not want my relief? When you hear your yeah, help completely. I reckon they will. Who could my rope and 
shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done what shall I Lift your hands. Drop his green! 